Hi everybody, it's 314 Reactor here, and I've been sent the Ice Tower Cooling Fan from Seed Studio. Thanks to them for sending me this. So I'm going to be attaching this to my Raspberry Pi 4, which is the uh, 4 gigabyte version. And the Raspberry Pi 4 gets extremely hot, so what they've devised is this very clever, almost desktop CPU-like heatsink. So let's just dive right in. This is going to be a first look without any real pre-prep. So there's the mounts there, and then there's the screws and some pads, and here's the main beast all wrapped up. Wow, that looks cool. That looks very cool. <laughs> That's pretty cool. That's pretty awesome. I believe that will go into the 5 volts. Let's have a look at the instructions. 5 volt, yep, this will be ground 5 volt. So I'm wondering if this is actually compatible with my case that I've got here. Uh, okay, so these I think are for older pies like 3V, 3V Plus. So technically, I should be able to just plonk that through there and that's making contact. So yeah, that's going to fit. Add thermal paste. Door number one bracket. All right, so I think we're good to go. Let's just dive right in. So it says thermal paste, but I think what it means is a thermal pad, which is one of these. Off that goes. And on the other side, I'm guessing. There we go. So then that goes on the main CPU there. Plumb that in nicely. Check that's making contact. Yep, that is. So flip it around. So we're gonna have to undo these. Someone's doing some grinding or something outside, so sorry about the noise. This right off, and that should reveal the bottom of the board. Yep. Screws in. Let me just make sure they're nice and tight, but not too tight. Little extra twist, extra twist. Twist and extra twist. Pie bow back on. I think that was the right way round. Yep, it was. And screw that in there. And there we go. The only thing remaining is to get the old GPIO job out. Five volts there. And the GND. Okay, and there it is. That's it assembled. Only takes about 10 minutes. Really easy to follow. And it looks absolutely amazing with that pie bow on. Let's get a nice little shot of it there. Awesome. Let's make sure there's no excessive wobble. That's really cool. Oh man, it looks proper high performance. All right, so let's get this plugged in, fire it up, and then we see if I've done it right. And we'll see what happens. Here we are, all set up plugged in, ready to go. Let's see if I've done this properly. Oh yeah, blue LED in there as well. Okay, so we'll get it booted up. Um, got the temperature uh, shown on the taskbar, so we'll be able to run some tests and see how much we can push this. And before that, I'll get some B-roll.
Okay, so here we are. Just getting the idle temperature, 36 degrees. Just hovering around 36, 37 degrees. Uh, what I'm gonna do is compile PyTorch. So yeah, let's see how the ice tower handles it, and let's go. So it's been running for a good few minutes now, and it's at 47, 48 degrees. About 75% of the way through compiling. And it's still pretty cool. Not too hot there. The heat's dissipating nicely from there. So I think that pretty much concludes that test. Alrighty, so we have the Raspberry Pi 4 here. That just has a normal heat sink inside that case. And we'll see just how hot it gets. Okay, it's only been running for a few minutes there. And it's already at 69 degrees, 67 degrees. Almost at 70 degrees. So that's significantly hotter than it was on the fan. That's, I think it's over 20 degrees hotter. So let's keep that running for a bit longer and then we'll try and add in a graphical test on top just to really push it. Unfortunately, I can't get Quake 3 to work on the Raspberry Pi 4 at the moment. I don't know why. I'll put the error in this write-up. So if anyone knows how to fix it, please do let me know. Okay, so not only have I got GLX gears and PyTorch compiling, I've also got Minecraft running just to really push it. And we are up to 84 degrees, which is quite hot. Let's give it a... You can really feel the temperature spreading all through that. So that's already, that's only been running for a few minutes and that's already quite considerably hot. So we'll leave that on for a while, see how it goes. And then I'll rerun the same test on the old faithful ice tower, which I imagine will handle it a lot better. Okie dokie, so it's been left for a good while now, and it's pretty much 85 degrees, 84 degrees. I think by now the Pi is underclocking to try and keep that temperature down, but that's pretty much unsustainable with a pretty heavy load. And yeah, that's quite toasty. In fact, yeah, the USB metal on the side is feeling uncomfortably hot. In fact, what I've done is open it up, so I'm going to do a direct touch on this heatsink here and see how hot it is. Yep, that's quite hot. So let's, uh, let's switch off this before this all blows up or something, and then we'll move on to testing the ice tower with the mega test. Okay, then it's the final meltdown test, and we're on the ice cooling tower. And we've got Minecraft, GLX gears, and a nice big compilation going. CPU is 100% currently at 43 degrees. Let's leave this on for a while and see what the temperature gets to. Okay, it's been running for quite some time now and the temperature is still only 46, every now and then ticking up to 47 degrees. That's about idle on the other case that I used with the normal heatsink inside. So that's very impressive. So essentially with the ice tower under heavy load, it only reaches temperatures that the normal heatsink arrives at when it's just sat on idle, which is pretty crazy. So I'm really happy with this. It looks really good, performs really well. Uh, it got the Pi 4 down to under load temperatures, the same temperature as the normal heatsink is on idle, which is crazy. So it knocked about 40 degrees off of that, which is nuts. And it also looks really good. It's got blue LED in there. Looks like an arc reactor, which is awesome. So the results in the end were that on the normal heatsink under idle it was 48 degrees, under a heavy load it got to 70 degrees, and then under an even heavier load it started going up to 85 degrees, which is where the operating system actually starts to warn you about how hot it's getting, and I think it starts to underclock at that point, which is very bad. But with this, under idle it was 36 degrees, under load it stayed at 48 degrees, which is about 40 degrees less than the normal heatsink gets, which is crazy. And it's what they say on the website as well. They say it knocks about 40 degrees off of it. So that is completely accurate. So that's very, very good. I'll be keeping this on my Raspberry Pi 4 and use it as my main driver. There's a link to it in the description below. And once again, thank you to Seed Studio for sending me this. Also in the description, there's links to my Hackster, my Electromaker, and my blog page, as well as my Twitter. So please go down there, follow those if you want. I'm always posting new stuff about video games and technology and trying to bring sci-fi things to life with Arduinos and Raspberry Pis, etc. So yeah, give that a follow if you want, and I'll see you in the next one.